Okay, so this is your typical Mongolian gear. On the outside of the gear, we have the outside layer of cotton, and it's held down in place with horsehair. Uh, they weave this uh, every year. They use a different type of horsehair. This is a good braided one that's thick. And underneath the first layer, there's the wool. This has uh, been rolled out on the step, and it's just sheep wool and a little bit of grass sometimes mixed in. It's very thick. And this is the, the walls, or the, the main structure of the outside of the gur. And it's just a lattice work of wood. And it's pretty strong because they have it so tightened up on here like this. Um, also on the outside of the gurs nowadays, almost always you'll see solar panels. So those are obviously powering the TVs, uh, maybe electronics, any other kind of things they have inside, which is actually really common nowadays. Um, the outside of this gur here, you can see a typically painted Gur door. Uh, these are just designs. Each family has a different design. Uh, and of course, now you see less horses and maybe more motorbikes. Almost every family has a bike. Take it into town, get fuel, get supplies. And yeah. When you enter a gear, you're supposed to not step on the threshold because that represents stepping on the host's throat, which is not good. So you step over the threshold and you should always walk to the left. And the men sit on the left and generally the, and there's always uh, some meat hanging on the left and often the horse uh, reins and saddle. And the women sit on the right with the kitchen, which is where grandma is now. And Generally, um, this is the altar here with like the um, most prized possessions, maybe photos of the family. And the honored guest would sit here, usually the host, the man. Um, in between here is uh, the main support beams and they represent um, earth and sky. And you're never supposed to pass things between them or walk between them. Um, usually when you first come to a gur, you sit down and the family will bring some sort of offering, maybe uh, cheese and bread and milk. And you always accept everything with your hand like this, except with your right hand and put your left hand underneath. Um, and there's a stove in the center. So in the winter time, you can warm up the gur. It can be really warm in here. And the gurs are lined with this <laughs> cotton on the inside. And in between the two layers of cotton, there's a la layer of uh, felt made with sheep's wool and it keeps it really warm. In the winter time, maybe they have two or three layers of sheep's wool. Um, nowadays, most gurs have a TV, like this one over here. So the uh, Mongolian steppe families are amazingly informed about world politics because they're always watching TV, international news. And here's some more meat over here hanging. So they hang lots of meat so that in the winter time they have a lot of backup. Uh, most of the work in the gur and on the farm is done during the summertime. And in the winter time is their time of relaxation when they can just eat the meat that they've dried, stay in the gear warm. Um, yeah, and these are the support beams on the roof and they're often painted. This one is painted just orange. Um, when a baby is born, if it's premature, if it's five days premature, they will hang the baby in a net, like a cradle, uh, in a hat, sorry, a cradle, like a hat, but they use it as a cradle. And if it's five days premature, they hang it one day, one day here, one day here, one day here, one day here, five times on five different poles. And that makes it so that the baby is no longer premature. Um, however, if it's 10 days premature, they hang it for 10 days in a hat. So, that's about it. Maybe go outside. Okay, we're gonna leave her to finish her <laughs> dishes. Bye, Kla. <laughs> and that's it, that's a Mongolian girl. driving for about eight hours and we stopped at this uh, gear camp and they're building a gear right now which is kind of cool so hopefully we can show you a time lapse of what it looks like from start to finish
Now they're just putting on the final touches of the gear, the top white part. They put on a plastic overlay so it doesn't get soaking wet inside when it's raining like this. And they're just putting on the white sheet on top. Okay, and that's it. Uh, the finished product. Not too hard. Took him about. <laughs> It took him about one hour to set it up from start to finish, and now the gear is ready.